All right, welcome. Uh, Algebra 1 Part A. Uh, technically, it's resource. I think I'm going to call calling it modified and make it an M instead of an R in the future, but for now, it is what it is. Um, this is the review for test 3. I'm going to do, I think, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have them written on the board. There's seven problems I'm going to do, and I'm actually going to add a, an eighth one problem really quickly. So the first one I'm going to do is number 1. What an odd place to start, right? This is just a simple combining like terms question. If I have an M squared, I need to mark other m squares with the same color. Here it is, here it is. So to combine those two, I'm just going to do what it says to do. 2.5 pl plus 5.3. So 2.5 plus 5.3 is 7.8. Just making sure I'm right. I had no trust in myself. I've been doing these for a while. Um, and then everything else happens to be an n, so I don't really need to um, Mark, mark them up at all. But I do need to pay attention to the signs. This is a positive 7.8 minus 3.2 minus 5.9. And they're like terms because they all have the same variable and that variable has the same exponent on it. If there's an n squared here, that wouldn't be the same term. So minus 1.3 n. So I'm going to look for that answer in there somewhere and it appears to be right there. Not really a big deal. Number one's not really all that complicated. Uh, the next one I'm going to work at, or, or look at, should I say, is number four. I tried a little bit of a different design choice for how this thing is set up, and I'm still not super happy with it, but at least you've got a little more room than usual. Uh, I've got enough to write on. That's a good thing. So for number four, I'm going to write a much larger version over here. You may need some paper to do the review as well as the uh, test itself if you are so inclined. So I've got that. First step is draw the line. Second step, of course, is baby goes bathroom. 5 times 10x is 50x. 5 times negative 10 is negative 50. Negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20x. Negative 5 times 4 is minus 20. Now I'm going to do pork chops and applesauce, so I need to get everything that's a variable term on the same side as the other. So I'm going to move this plus 20 over by subtracting 20. Remember, this minus here has nothing to do with this number. 50 minus 20 is 30x. Bring down your minus 50. Those cancel. Minus 20. Uh, here, we're at parties over now. There's the x. The friend to friend will be minus 50, so I need to add 50. I get 30. Divide by 30 on both sides because we're at the finish it stage. And x is equal to 1. So the answer to number four is just one. Not really a super huge deal. The next, te uh, the next question we're going to work on is number nine, which is sort of in a weird location. This is one of those ones where you have to order them from least to greatest. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and turn them all into decimal points, or into decimal form, I should say. So the square root of nine over two gives me two point one, two. And by the way, in my calculator, I needed to do this to make that happen. 9 divided by 2, as opposed to the fraction. I don't think it would have worked otherwise. Uh, 1 over 6 as a fraction, or 1 6 as a fraction, or as a decimal, is 0 0.16 repeating, which means it continues on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then square root of 4 is just 2. Now I need to make a comparison statement between them, so I'm going to put them all in a nice column. My 2.12 goes here, 0 0.5. Make sure you line up those decimal points on this line right there. 1 6 is 0 0.16, and I'm going to put some extra 6s there, at 1.6. See, this, these two are kind of tricky because you've got that 1 6 in common, but the decimal point is significantly different. I mean, it's off by a, a whole decimal place, so it's kind of a bad way to go about it if you don't pay much attention could mean a lot, you know. You put them in different spots and it's a big issue. Now, uh, I need to do least to greatest, which means I need to find my smallest set first. In order to do that, I need to look at this column of numbers right here. My zeros are the small are much smaller of course than ones and twos, so I need to make a comparison statement about these two at this stage. My smallest one is the one that's point 1 because 1 smaller than 5. So that means my first one is whatever 0 0.166 repeating is and in this case it would be 1 6 that's marked up here that's why I put it near it. So the first number in sequence should be 1 6th. Then the point 0.5 would come next 
It was already in that form originally. Then I need to make a, uh, I need to go back to the first column once I've gotten all the zeros out of the way and start comparing the first column again. I've got that 1.6 there. So 1.6 comes next. And then it's just which is bigger in the second column between the twos, the one or the zero. Well, the zero is the smaller of the two, and we're doing least to greatest. So the next one would be whatever 2.0 is, which is the square root of four. And finally, uh, the 2.12 thing would be square root of 9 over 2. So this is what I'm looking to have happen, and that answer is A. So just put them in a nice ordered format, one on top of the other, and I think those problems should be really simple uh, coming pretty soon, just in the next week or so. On this test, it shouldn't be any problem. Um, question next is number 15, which I may need to do that to get to. Nope, it's on this side. Of course, when I move it, it would be not on that side. So here's number 15. Not a very difficult problem. I'm going to write it down over here. The first step, of course, is to draw the line. Then I'm going to do the baby goes bathroom step. Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14z. Uh, here's my 70. Then it's parties over. Here's my star, so I need to get rid of this 14. That's the friend of friend. So plus 14 to get rid of. I need to subtract. Those cancel. 70 minus 14 is 56. Bring down your 14z. This is the finish at stage. To get rid of times 14, I need to divide. And you know it's divide because they're, or it's times because this is touching the z. If they touch, they multiply, right? So z is equal to 56 divided by 14, which is 4. So the answer to number 15 is A. At least it should be. I don't have the key right next to me. So if I miss one of these, you can bring it up in class uh, when you see me and be like, hey, dummy. You can't even do your own problems, right? How am I supposed to do them? The next one I'm going to look at is number 18. And if you call me dummy, I'm going to make a mistake on this. I'm not going to be mad at you. Um, this question says three times the sum. So I've got a couple math words there. You may remember that sum means add. Different refers to subtract. Product is my times question. And then a quotient would be divide. Quantity is parentheses and so on. In this case, it says three times the sum. That's important here. It doesn't say three times b, and it doesn't say, and there's this word sum in here, so it means three times some addition, and they want you to add b and f. So I know that this has to be a component, b plus f. So it can't be j because it doesn't have any add in it at all. Now, k says three times and it's got the B and the F there, but it says three times B. It doesn't say three times the sum of B and F, so that's how. Um, L doesn't have any times in it at all, or multiply. It says three times, right? So that's out. So it's got to be this one. This shows three times the uh, sum of B plus F. And I mean, eventually you do the distributive property there, but the way that it's set up is you need to have three in the parentheses B plus F. So be careful to make sure that you pick the one that matches what they're asking for. The next one we're going to look at is number 24. We're doing 24, 25, and I think I wanted to do 22 as well. So let me see if I can get to that one, which one I can get to faster. 24 is right there, so we're just going to do 24 really quickly. Um, if you remember, this minus in front means time. It means negative one. So you do the basically distributive property. Negative one times ten gives you, or negative one times negative ten gives you positive ten, and negative one times uh, four gives you negative four r. So I'm going to look for this one, and it's right here. No, it's not. I would have made a mistake there. So see. Don't do what I did. Be smarter than me. And do um, this one right here. Be careful. Also, I mean, sometimes it's just easier to remember or think about the idea that if there's a minus, just the min or just the negative sign in front of that parentheses, it just means you're going to change the sign on both. So this used to be negative 10, so I'll just make it positive 10. This used to be positive 4, so I'm just going to make it minus. Either way is fine by me. Just make sure you need to pick the right you make sure you pick the right one, like don't do what I was doing.
Um, the next one I'm going to look at is 25. Because 25 looks weird, not hard at all. It's by no means difficult. Number 25 says 6 sevenths x minus 8 equals 7. The thing that looks weird about it is it's got that fraction in there that would make you think that it's a divide, but it's actually not. 6 sevenths minus 8 equals 7. Draw your line. There's no uh, weird stuff here. It's straight down to parties over. Here's my x. I need to get rid of this minus 8 because this 6 sevenths is touching the x. So I can worry about that later. I need to add 8 to both sides. These cancel. 15. Don't freak out in the next step. Now you can see that the x itself is next to the fraction. It's not uh, in the fraction. If it was x on top of 7, then we'd be looking at a divide. But really, they're just touching. So this is a times question. So in order to get rid of multiply, I need to divide. So you're going to divide both sides by 6 sevenths. So do 15 divided by 6 over 7, and you get 17 and 1 half. Not a big deal. One more, I think, and that'll be good. Uh, the last one we're going to look at is number 22. I think I have to scroll down. It's kind of one of those longer ones. I'm going to try to give myself plenty of space to work it. It looks overwhelming. It's not really that hard. negative 6p plus 7 equals 3, 2p minus 3, minus 4, negative 10 plus 4p. This is a gigantic looking problem. It's really not that complicated. Just follow the system. First step, draw the line. Second step, baby goes to the bathroom, so I do 3 times 2. Then I do 3 times negative 3. Then I look at negative 4 times negative 10. Then I do negative 4 times positive 4. Bring down all this junk on the left side because I haven't used it yet. Now I'm at the uh, clean your rooms time. As you can see on this side of the equation, I've got a variable term here and here. So I'm going to bring those together like they're supposed to be. So I do 6 minus 16, which gives you negative 10 P. Then I want to put together negative 9 and 40, so that should give me plus 31. So from here, I am at pork chops and applesauce time. I need to remove this minus 10 by adding 10p to both sides. Or you can move the 6, but it's usually easier just to get the variables on the left side. Plus, it gives you a nice positive uh, number. That's always good. Now we're at parties over stage. Here's p. It's touching 4, so I need to get rid of plus 7. Twenty-four. Last step, divide by four on both sides, and it gives you p is equal to six. So your answer is J. Not a really big deal. The test shouldn't be super complicated. I tried to keep the numbers within a reasonable amount, so I am hopeful that um, it's really a, a good test for you and things go well. And if you have any questions, ask right before the test if you're watching this video and you had some questions about the, uh, the video or about any of the other problems that I didn't get to cover. So good luck on the test, and I hope everything works out for you.